Hey guys, it's Cooper Rich here from Kick It to Scoot. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. You want to be part of the show, Kick It Scoot? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. And if you want to email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com, send through your questions and you may feature on the show and be answered your question from yours truly, Cooper Gretch, for free. Yes, for free. If you want to be on the show, as I said, send it through and I'll get back to you. Go Saints. Two ways this is. Kick it to Scoops. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumours and Results. What a big, big show we've got for you guys today. Uh, we've always got the world famous segment, Scoops goes bang, reviewing and previewing the finals, round one of the finals, and preview round two of the finals. Uh, we've got the, my Brownlow votes. Now you're thinking, Brownlow votes? Well, sorry, I wouldn't call it Brownlow votes. Scoops medal votes for the final series. I'll get to how that will work when we get to that segment. I'm reintroducing my hero of the week, or could it be heroes, uh, the club reviews of a few clubs. Now that the club's been eliminated and the, uh, well, the, from Essendon to Sydney and so that didn't make the finals all been eliminated, we're going to start reviewing some of the clubs. And the two clubs today we're going to start off by reviewing are the Saints and the West Coast Eagles. Also, got your audio messages, this is two today, and I'm gonna go through some trade talk and some coaching discussions as well. And also merch and cameo. So let's start there. You want me on cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And merch, merch is, well, it's a lot of options out there for you guys. Not only is there t-shirts, there's mugs, there's stubby holders, there's a hoodie, there's t-shirts, there's hats, everything. Yes, I might have said t-shirts twice, but I don't care. And also, being, re- or being introduced for the first time last night, as you would have seen already, bumper stickers, car stickers, whatever you want to call them, they don't have to be for your cars, they can be for absolutely anything. But bumper stickers, you want your bumper stickers, you want any of those items I just listed off. Head to the website, which is attached in the description of this video, and go and get your merch today, because you don't know how long certain merch will be there for. So if you want it, you know where to go, put it to yours now. Also, I want to say at the top of the show also, if you ever want your questions answered live on the show or for an audio message, email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com. You can send it through any time of the week, but you know what to do. Send it through any time, and you'll be on the next week's show depending on what day you send it through. Now, let's start off with the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Oh, uh, trolls, trolls. I've got a simple message for you guys. Simply this. Okay? You don't like my work. I might be repeating myself, but it's got to get it stuck into your stupid heads. You don't like my stuff. That's fine. You don't agree with my opinions. That's fine. You don't like my stuff. Don't watch. You don't like my Facebook page. Don't follow. Piss off. Simply. Death threats over. Now, when I put the hashtag free kick Geelong, okay? That's not an uncommon thing to post. And regardless if you say I do it continuously, I bag Geelong left, right and centre or certain clubs, does, does it matter? Does that result in death threats being okay? No. Death threats are never okay. I could bag a team every day 24-7. That does not give you the right, which I don't bag them 24-7, but if I did, it does not, still doesn't give you the right to send death threats. Sending death threats of any form is not okay. It's hurtful. It's depressing. It's a lot of things. It is not 
okay. If you're an idiot that does it to me or anyone, you're an absolute f-ing wanker. You absolutely are. You're a low-life scumbag that sits behind a keyboard um, and just wants to shit on us because you got a life and you got nothing better to do than just troll people online. Seeing the shit towards Cody Waitman, which was absolutely pathetic. Now, in terms of the decisions, I don't think they will freeze at all. In fact, it was ridiculous. Don't blame Cody Waitman. Blame the umpiring. And in fact, you can blame the umpiring, but don't threaten them either. It is absolutely pathetic. See a lot of threats being sent by people, particularly Essendon supporters in this Cody Waitman scenario. Uh, to send him messages on his Instagram post, he had nothing to do with the game, and you just wanted to be as smart as him. You, you just show what a low-life scumbag you are, and I'm glad Essendon have called out the bullshit from their fans that were trashing on Cody Waitman and on Anthony McDonald to put as well with all the racist comments and shit like that because he didn't play. Um, to those people that send death threats and trolls online in general, lift your fucking game. It's pathetic. Now, also, something that's pathetic is the treatment of now departed Carlton coach, David Teague. The Carlton board and the people have not defended David Teague at all throughout this saga. I agree with Liam Pickering and um, and anyone else that said that Carlton have treated him like shit. They have. He's been treated poorly, and I'm glad, I'm glad he gave them a swipe on the way out, David Teague, that is. They deserved it. They've treated him like shit. They uh, wanted a Clarko. They made it pretty much well known they wanted a Clarko. While David Teague was still in contract, the utter disrespect, they also pretty much hinted that Ross Lyon was their second choice. Ross Lyon will now, as I exclusively revealed on the latest YouTube video I did, that um, Ross Lyon will be the new Carlton coach. That is still the case. Um, yeah, the treatment of David, K- David Teague by Carlton is absolutely shocking. To see all the crappy cop from some of the media outlets saying that uh, he should go, he's no good. How about blaming some of the players? You know, Paddy Cripps, Zach Williams, Adam Saad, some of their big name players, they're absolutely nothing. It's just particular Saad and Williams. Saad was okay. Williams was terrible. Eddie Betts retired. Um, you got a lot of good young players Mackay, Walsh, Kerno, Weedering, Liam Jones. I know he's not as young, but he's good players. So it's not, it's not just David Teague's fault. They had the players there. So you got to blame the players as well. David Teague was the scapegoat. Like a St. Kilda, Alan Richardson was the scapegoat. Um, and now David Teague's copying the same type of treatment that even as recently as this year, Nathan Buckley copped. And let's see how Collingwood have done. Not much different to when Bucks was there. So, um, look, Carlton have treated David Teague like shit. They need to lift their game, Carlton, because they're not a joke at the moment. And while I'm on the coaching side of things, um, well, actually, I'll get to that in a second. But, yeah, the treatment of David Teague by Carlton was absolutely shit house. He's been linked to Richmond, so hopefully he gets to go somewhere else. Until the Carlton board and... Uh, High ups that are treated take like shit. Lift your game and get out. Now, while I'm on it, I know I said I'll probably mention this later. I'll mention it now. Craig McRae will be the new Collingwood coach. Simple as that. So, Pirates fans, let me know your thoughts down below or any other club fans of the appointment of Craig McRae, who's currently at a port hall. He won't be soon, but it was at Hawthorne. So, yeah. And he coached in the VFL for a few years and was a premiership coach through the VFL. Now, going to review and preview the games just gone and upcoming in the final series. So we obviously had week one of the finals starting all the way back on Friday night at the Adelaide Oval. Adelaide smashed Geelong 86 to the Geelong Footy Club 43, winning by 43 points. Coincidentally, the Power have the week off now, have a home prelim final. It'll be a great day for the Power. The full capacity is potentially at or close to that. So it'll be great for the Power fans. Uh, Zach Butters, uh, Mitch Georgiades should be back. Uh, yeah, a lot of good young players in that Adelaide side. Uh, Xavier Dersma, Connor Rosie. Uh, yeah, and you got the big full forward in Charlie Dixon. You've got uh, Robbie Gray, one of the best, if not probably the best Adelaide player ever. You've got Travis Boak, who's in that category as well as Robbie Gray. Ollie Wines, who's a Brownlow favourite. They were freaking awesome, the power. Oh, uh, it was great to see. And they'll have the week off. Geelong got the second chance against the University this week, which we'll get to shortly. But yeah, in this game alone, Ollie Wines, great. Travis Boak. Uh, for Geelong, Mitch Dunkel was probably the only good player. Geelong, Narazio, fantastic. Should be fine for the prelim. He was great. And the other, the elimination final at Utah Stadium in Tasmania, Sydney, 73, defeated by the Giants, 74. Sydney had so many chances in the last, I think it was 2-6, 2-7 in the last quarter. Um, and I think they kicked five points in a row. James Bell, Tom Hickey, Lance Franklin, maybe one or two other players as well. Their chance to secure a goal late. But... 
Unfortunately for them, the Giants would just held on, but probably, to be honest, deserved the win. Um, Isaac Cumming went off injured. Sam Reid went off injured. And there was a few others as well. So few will be in doubt. Um, but, yeah, the Giants are fantastic. And unfortunately, as of right now, Toby Green is officially being ruled out for the rest of the season with three-week suspension. Um, yeah, unfortunately for Toby, he's out for the rest of the year. Which we'll get to that in a bit more detail shortly. Uh, but, yeah, the Giants got the win. Have a, have a final against Geelong in Perth this Friday night. Uh, but the Giants progress. The Swan season is over. And we'll get to a few of their potential players that may be out of the Swans later on in the program, including Luke Parker, George Hewitt, Dylan Stevens, and uh, John Dawson. I think John Dawson may stay, but we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, the Adelaide, Adelaide, in, at the Adelaide, uh, I can't speak. At the Adelaide Oval, uh, Melbourne and Brisbane. Melbourne, 93, defeated the Lions, 60, 33-point victory to the Demons. Lock Neal was clearly best on ground at 46 possessions, like 12 clearances, like 600 metres games just under. He was terrific. Can't say he wasn't best on ground. Clayton Oliver was awesome as well, though, with 33 possessions as a goal. Uh, but yet the Demons uh, seems to work with Benny Brown up there in the forward line now. Um, but yeah, Melbourne were too good and progress to the prelim winning final. Get this week off. Brisbane will face S- uh, Melbourne, uh, you wish, Chesson offence, uh, the Western Bulldogs on Saturday night at the Gabba. But we'll get to that shortly. And the Sunday, the other elimination final was the Western Bulldogs, 85, defeated Essendon 36, 49 point retreat at UTAS Stadium. Uh, my good old mate Bev was up and about the doggies, 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 bark, bark, bark. He was barking indeed, was Bev uh, with his Western Bulldogs mask on. Good to see Bev and everyone there following protocols there. Um, I'm like some people in Sydney and Victoria, not following basic protocols. But yeah, uh, well done to Bev and his uh, Bulldogs, got the win. Uh, yeah, as I said, Cody Waveman kicked four, yes, from three kicks, I know. Yes, and events, yes, you were screwed over some shots, a goal, and Bulldogs getting some four frees, four goals. We know, but that streak, 6,023-plus days, will continue. Long live that streak. But home for at least another year. Get used to it, Bomber fans, that uh, not winning a final is pretty common for you guys. Darcy Parrish was pretty good. Zach Merritt was good. But the Bulldogs are mainly Jackson McRae, as per usual. Josh Shackey was pretty good as a late inclusion. So Shack, the Shack attack was great. Now, to preview the round two of the final series, there's two semifinals. First off, at Optus Stadium, Geelong hosting GWS Friday night at 7 feet. As I just said, Toby Green is out. So I'll get to that now. Uh, I'm going to get to that now in this game. Um, I'm just going to read the um, quote that I have here. Uh, Toby Green will not play football again this year with the AFL Tribunal handing the Giants superstar a three-match suspension for making intentional contact, what's classed as, with umpire Matt Stevick. After a marathon hearing this morning, it lasted well over four hours. The Tribunal agreed with AFL legal counsel Jeff Gleeson that Green's actions were insolent and contemptuous. They found Green guilty of intentionally making aggressive, dem- demonstrative and disrespectful contact to umpire Stevick, handing the sanction that will end his season. In giving evidence to the tribunal, umpire Matt Stefik described the contact as minor and said he didn't feel threatened at the time, but the veteran umpire revealed he didn't think it was a good look for the game and said there wasn't an element, there was an element of it being disrespectful. So unfortunately for the Giants and Toby Green, his season is over, or for Toby Green's season is over. But uh, yeah, they've got a big game against Geelong on Friday night at the Optus Stadium in Perth. Uh, 7.50 Victorian time, local, uh, local time is 5.50. Um, now I'm going to go for the Giants. I don't understand why Geelong are favourites and clear favourites. I mean, yes, I understand Toby Green's a big out and Julius got a few plays on the injury concerns like Isaac Cumming um, and Sam Reid, but and Tom Green is out officially for the rest of the year. Broken arm. Um, yeah, I'm still going to go the Giants. I think Geelong, uh, Gito is a win comfortably, to be honest. If Gito is can beat Geelong in Geelong with 19 players out and still missing about six of them at least, so um, a, big, a big note of that regular 22. Why can't they beat them now on a neutral ground in Perth? Um, but yeah, I'm going to go for the Giants. And the other semi-final at the Gabba at 7.20 Victorian time. Uh, we've got the Brisbane Lions hosting the Bulldogs, as I said, at the Gabba. Uh, yeah, no, I think there's been another walk in the park for the Brisbane Lions. Bulldogs scraped over the line to make final. Well, they, didn't, they didn't scrape in the eight, but they're, they're making up the numbers at the moment, to be honest. Um, uh, hopefully, I don't have any words for saying that, but I think they're making up the eight. Uh, making out the numbers, and despite finishing fifth at the moment, their form's not good enough. Yes, they beat Essendon, 
but they piled on a lot of late goals. So I'm going to go for the Brisbane Lions pretty comfortably in this game. There will be no damage stay, which will be inter- interesting to see their forward structure. But I'm going to go, as I said, for the Brisbane Lions with Lock and Neal in great form. Now, now I said earlier, I've got some Brownlow votes or Scoops Medal votes. But what it is, guys, for people that are unsure, is the Scoops Medal Finals Edition. Now, clearly you could say, oh, Cooper, Quillade and Melbourne now have advanced to prelims. So they can only play a maximum of three games where Geelong, hypothetically, or Brisbane could play four games if they make the grand final. So they've got a better chance of getting votes. Well, never fear. It is necessarily not going to be who gets the most votes. It'll be off the average. So, for example, if Travis Boak played three games, polled nine votes, whereas, say, hypothetically, someone at Brisbane, or, or let's go in, the, yeah, someone at Brisbane, say, played four games and polled 10 votes. I would say that Travis Boak, whoever bowled nine votes in three games, is better than 10 in four. So we'll go on average. But <clears throat> in reenacting like the great Gillen McLaughlin, here it is, the 2021 Scoops Medal Finals Edition. <clears throat> Quadelaide v Geelong. Quadelaide, oh, Fantasia, one vote. Quadelaide, oh, Wines, two votes. Quadelaide, T Boak, three votes. Sydney v GWS, GWS, Jay Kelly, one vote. Sydney, Al Parker, two votes. Sydney, I Heaney, three votes. Melbourne v Brisbane, Brisbane, C Cameron, one vote. Melbourne, C Oliver, two votes. Brisbane, Al Neal, three votes. Western Bulldogs v Essendon. Let me repeat that. Western Bulldogs v Essendon, Western Bulldogs. Jay Shackey, one vote. Essendon, D. Parrish, two votes. Western Bulldogs, Jay McRae, three votes. Now, the early leaderboard is essentially the, all the guys have polled three votes. Travis Boak, Isaac Keeney, Lockie Neal, and Jackson McRae. Obviously, now Isaac Keeney is ineligible to win, not because he was suspended, purely because of the fact that Jackson McRae, Lockie Neal, and Travis Boak still remain in this final series. Technically, he could win, but... You know what's going to happen. So Jackson McRae, he won the Scoops Medal, which you've seen last week for the first ever edition of the Scoops Medal for season 2021. Can Jackson McRae go back to back and win the Scoops Medal for the finals edition also? Find out grand final week. But the Bulldogs would have to probably win another game or two or play another game or two. At least one. Obviously, they're playing next this week, you fool. But um, the yeah, week after as well, probably to win. But we'll see. That's the Scoops Medal finals edition. Hope you guys enjoyed that now i'm going to move on to my hero of the week my hero of the week is you guys everyone or not all of you the people that have bought my merch supported me through tough times and given me some motivation to say stuff the trolls stick it up them keep doing what you want to do you people you really are my heroes league, not just, as I said, the people that defended me through the post, I really do appreciate the interaction on those type of posts was amazing. And especially 99.9% of the people commenting were uh, support messages. So I really appreciate you all. Every one of you it does not go unnoticed. Uh, I'll try and get through to most of them. It was over 500. So I really do appreciate all the comments. I went through them all. If not, I did not go to 30 yours and you sent me an appreciation message. I appreciate you a lot. Um, but yeah, you guys are my hero heroes technically of the week now it's time for the club reviews now the, this is how my club review criteria is going to be for when i go through every club season i will go through as follows their highlights their lowlights their trade targets draft targets potentially or top of player players who disappointed and impressed and a grading now the grading is like a report card like your school reports, your exam records. You get an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, an F. Uh, fair to say you may see some low grades. I'm a harsh grader. It's not out of 10. I thought of doing it out of 10, but I thought let's go to A, B, C, D, E, Fs. Let's see if there'll be any Fs in any of my report cards for any clubs this year. As I said off the top, I'm going to go through the Saints and the Eagles. So let's start off with the St Kilda Football Club. To be honest, some of the highlights for the St Kilda Football Club in season 2021, there was some, in particular, uh, these ones. So the win in the second half against West, it's all the way at the start of the year at Marvel Stadium, 
what a great comeback that was in the second half. You've seen so many great performances. Jack Steele, it just, the list goes on and on. Uh, that was some great highlights for the season. Uh, that back come from behind win against the Eagles at Marvel. Uh, towards the end of the season was the winning against the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. And then the last quarter going bang, 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 bang. Uh, not Scooch goes bang, but bang, bang, bang on the Lions with the Sainers. And uh, at the Gabba, that was so great to see. That was probably our best win of the year. And a week or two before that was the win against Richmond at the MCG, keeping Richmond to two goals in a dry game at the MCG, the home of footy. Um, Keep Richmond to two goals, winning by 40 points. That was an awesome win for the Saints. Uh, some other highlights, clearly, from, oh, that's from a club point of view. Some low lights, to be honest, was probably some of those big losses to the Western Bulldogs early in the year, Essendon. Um, I mean, I think, to be honest, the Kilda are better than Essendon and shouldn't have got anywhere. Or they should not, A, they shouldn't have lost, let alone get beaten by that bad. Um, that was probably some low lights. Um, some players who disappointed, uh, the usual suspects, Ben Long, Nick Caulfield and Luke Dunson and Luke Dunstan has been shipped out, which I'll get to shortly. Uh, but yeah, they're clearly the players who are disappointed. Uh, I know Luke Dunstan had a good back after but his disposal efficiency is shocking. Uh, ben Long and Nick Caulfield fall in that category as well. They were dropped in and out of the side. Guys, all three should be out of the club this year with Dunstan obviously, as I said, already out. Players here are impressed. Well, clearly Jack Steele, the man of Steele, who's a Brownlow contender for sure, yet again, like last year. Uh, Cooper Sharman from the midseason season he was great in the games he played. Uh, one to look out for next year. Jack Sinclair was a man, uh, was fantastic. I was going to say man is still, that's steely. Uh, it's Jack Sinclair. thinks he's got big calves. Uh, Jack Sinclair had a great year. Tim Membry was pretty consistent. Um, yeah, but uh, that's some of the targets and players who are disappointed and impressed. Uh, the trade targets and draft targets. From a draft point of view, at this stage, you'll have picked nine. If they retain that, I think they need to target, some from a draft point of view, some players, some key position players, whether that's uh, as a key defender or as a key forward support for Maxi King and uh, Timmy Membry. Um, some trade targets they're linked to. Well, some players I think they should take a forward rucks. So Hayden McLean they're linked to. I think they'll honestly get him, which would be a good addition. The Saints, he played at Sandringham, which is, which is St Kilda's VFL alignment side a few years ago. And then obviously joined Sydney a few years ago after the Sandringham stint. So, uh, yeah, he's highly rated. He's a young, I think he's only 21. Hayden playing the top of my head. So, uh, he'd be a good addition to the Saints side if they do recruit him. Now, as I exclusively revealed, Luke Parker is a target for the Saints. Hopefully, Luke Parker could be one. Now, he wants a longer-term contract. Dan Hannibury's taking a pay card. Dunson's out, which would be about 400000 free. Uh, I wonder if there's some form of agreement. Saints and Sydney have a good uh, mutual respect between each other when it comes to trades to me. Membry, Dan Hannibury, Zach Jones. Um, and some the other way. So, um, yeah, I think this could work. Luke Park, if he does go, I think it'll be St Kilda. He wants a longer-term deal. St Kilda can now offer that with some cap space from Dunson and Hannafree's pay cut. Um, and the retirements of Jake Carlisle, James Frawley, Sean McKernan, Dill Robertson. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, Luke Park is a genuine chance. Luke Park, Ben King, I think that'll be the year after. He's going to be St Kilda whether people say, oh, he might go to Essen Bulldogs. No, he'll be a Saint. Whether uh, This year, I don't think so. I think it'll be the year after that. Uh, but yeah, so Luke Parker could be the main one and Hayden McLean as of right now. But things can change. And I'm going to say right now, do not be surprised to could have recruit or try and get Daniel Talia as key defensive options, which they need to fill, Frawley and Carla retiring. Um, and Matt Crouch, a brother of Matt, who's at the Saints now. Don't be surprised the Saints get Matt Crouch, especially if they can't get Luke Parker. They're heavily into Parker to wait and see on that. Now, the grading for the Saints this year, it has a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries. Paddy Ryder, Rowan Marshall, Ben Patton, Jaron Geary, Jake Carlisle, James Frawley, Dan Hannabry, Hunter Clark, Tommy Highmore, Jack Billings. I'll go, keep going on and on with the players that have been injured this year for past the Jimmy Webster. So uh, Dan McKenzie, I could keep going on and on and on. So uh, my grading for the Saints, Keeping that in mind, is it B? A B. Yes, I did, we make, didn't make finals, but all those injuries to take that into account was a B. Not a B plus, a B. Now, we'll move on to the West Coast Eagles review criteria, the grading. Now, uh, the highlights of the West Coast Eagles um, simply was absolutely nothing. Yep. 
absolutely nothing. I'm not kidding you. Absolutely nothing. They had a really poor year. I mean, it's so, they had injuries at time from time to their key players. Can't really recall some great wins for the Eagles, to be honest. Um, some were affected. Some of their wins were through umpiring positions. So, uh, I mean, I suppose if you want to say there's any highlight, and it's not really a highlight because it was against Carlton, but when they played on neutral territory at the SHG, yeah, SHG, you're funny hearing that, the game in Sydney. Why are they going, Gladys? <clears throat> Terrible. Um, yeah, I thought I'd get that in. Uh, yeah, it was at the SCG against Carlton. They had, what, about eight players out West Coast. Carlton had a full-strength side that game, and they won pretty comfortably with a lot of players out West Coast. It was probably their highlight, but not really a highlight. If I'm just going to class it as one. And the low light, wow. So many th- smashings they copped. Um, underperformed it, so many sides. Um, um, the game against Fremantle late in the season, the Derby, kept Fremantle's chances alive, ended West Coast is essentially... Not mathematically, but realistically, it did. Um, yeah, that was they were pretty disappointing. Now, some trade targets, they're not really linked to anyone because of their tight salary cap, the Eagles. But if they were to let a, a regular player like a Elliot Yo, a Jack Redden, a Jack Darling, someone like that, if someone like that was to go out, they could free up some room. But there are a lot of young places that potentially could be going out, and that's Jared Brander, um, some of those young uh, ruck type options, Bailey Williams, uh, Harry Edwards, a young key defender. Uh, someone like that may slip out because they're not getting regular opportunity with McGovern and Barras up the fence. You've got Nick Nat as your ruckman, so all the ruck depth could be considering leaving as well. So, yeah, and then you've got Nathan Vardy who could be in that category as well. So, yeah, some some players that mainly come in, there's no one really linked to the Eagles at the moment. Um, so they may have to ship one out just to get someone in. But Jared Brand, if we want to keep an eye on them, maybe out the door. The Eagles talks apparently have in progress too bold for an extension. He's out of contract. Some draft targets. They need to draft some future Ruckman. Uh, with Nick Natanui going out um, in the next three years, I'd say. Uh, they need some depth. Then Nathan Vardy's not the long-term answer. Uh, Bailey Williams could be out, so therefore they'll be stuck with no Ruck options and future options, so they may need to target Ruckman. Um, they did have a lot at one point, but then they got rid of a few. And Some like Tomicky left, which they should have kept. Yeah, great year for the Swans. Um, so, yeah, they need to take of that. They need some key forward options as well to replace uh, Josh Kennedy who will play next year properly, and that's about it. And Jack Darling, who knows how many years he's got left, so maybe two or three. So then, regardless, Jack Darling's on a key position for him, more of a third talk. So they need to take some players. There's some players who impressed and disappointed. Um, some players that impress him, although he didn't play a lot of games, Alex Witherden, who they got from the Brisbane Lions, they'd be – for dirt cheap, so they'd be happy with the games he played. He was injured a bit this year. He was dropped at one point, but um, the games he played was pretty solid. I mean, Andrew Gaff is ever reliable. Great on the great wingman. Holden Wall in my Brownlow votes. I think he was off the top of my head. He was pulled the most. So um, yeah, he was pretty good. Andrew Gaff. Some players are disappointed. Well, you, you. oh, Jamie Cripps was also a good, impressive player this year. Um, Tim Kelly wasn't at his best when he wasn't injured. Uh, Jerry McGovern, likewise. Um, you can go through pretty much the team combined effort was pretty disappointed, but there's some players of note that didn't impress the grade for the West Coast Eagles. Yes, I know they just missed out on the eight, but they beat up on bottom sides. They only won some games at home. Their home record this year was terrible. So my rate grading for the Eagles is an F. Yes, an F. The first F grading. They're like the expectation is not necessarily the latter position you go, oh, Cooper, they only just missed out on the eight or Scoops or whatever you want to call me. That's respectful. Um, they only just missed out on the eight. Yeah, they did. But their expectations were high to make the top eight, let alone top four even. Um, and to be nowhere near it, just not even make the eight, they would have scraped it. They were lucky if they scraped in. But um, no, honestly, this season was an F. They had some injuries, which could have graded it an E, but I'm giving them an F. They were terrible this year, the Eagles. As I said, proven through the highlights. I was struggling to give them a highlight. So, yeah, they were, their grading is an F. Now, we're going to go through some. Oh, there's two audio messages we have today. So we're going to hear from them now and hear what they want to say because technically I could be blasting them when you hear it. Guys, let me know your thoughts. Here we go. Hi, Scoops. It's Peter Ian Staker here. I'm a long-time caller, first-time listener. Um, given that Brad Scott's uh, name is in for the Collingwood coaching role and Chris Scott's at the Cats. 
if Brad Scott was to get the role, would it be the first time two sets of brothers have coached four different AFL teams, given that uh, Ben Rutten's at the Bombers and Brett Rutten's at the Saints? Thanks, Goose. Now, at first, I thought, here we go. Someone, for some weird reason, has an obsession with talking about Brad Scott and Chris Scott and then talking about Brett Ratten and Brett Rutten, who were not related, which some tool tried to ask me a long time ago. Now, I'm simply not going to answer that because that was stupid, say, trying to intentionally say that Brett Ratten and Rutten are brothers. Firstly, they've got the same, different last names, you tosser. So how can that be relatable? Uh, Simply stupid. I wanted to play. Now, you can say, why am I playing something that you're not going to give an answer to? I played it to out this idiot for stupid. And I know his name is not what he said it is. It's Callan. So, Callan, you're a fool. We'll move on to the next question. And if you thought I was angry about that one, get ready for this one. Hello, Scoops. It is me, uh, Apu from Bangladesh. Um, I was just wondering what your favorite Saints home ground is uh, out of these three. Uh, Marvel Stadium, uh, Etihad Stadium, or Utah Stadium. And I'd like to give a quick shout out to my boys. Thank you, Scoops. Now, this idiot who claims himself to be named Apu, well, that wasn't his name on his email, and he wants to say from Bangladesh. So you want to say you're from Bangladesh. A, there's a shit accent that you were pretending to do. And first of all, or oh, sorry, secondly to that, you, you say you're from Bangladesh, are you? Are you really from Bangladesh? So you're from Bangladesh, but yet you've got an Australian email, a Gmail, and you're telling me that you're from Bangladesh with Gmail as your email? Yeah, please. If you want to make it as obvious that you're not from Bangladesh, you're an absolute idiot. Um, Bangladesh don't have Gmail, so how could you supposedly be from Bangladesh, you absolute idiot. So, and you, I, I will answer your dumb question. What's St Kilda's best ground, Marvel, uh, Eddie Had, or you, Taz? You think I don't get that stupid, lame comment, you absolute idiot? You, Taz, stay, you're trying to say, oh, ha-ha, that's going to be St Kilda's new future ground. St Kilda is not relocating to Tasmania, you absolute fucking geek. And for anyone else that keeps wanting to say that, they are not relocating to Tasmania, neither are North Melbourne. So get that out of your stupid minds. And even Hawthorne, to a lesser degree, are not moving to Tassie. It'll be a new side when they get one. So those tools, and that so-called supposed guy from Bangladesh, lift your game, you absolute geeks. Now, we're going to move on to the next thing I'm going to go through. And that is, so as I said, at the top of the show, and any more audio messages you want to send through to me, realistic ones, not like those two geeks, or you'll be ousted on the show, um, you can email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com and you may feature on the show. Now, when we go through some trade talk um, and some or coaching talk, I mentioned, I've, I've basically covered that before, though, with Craig McRae will be the Collingwood coach and Ross the boss, Ross Lyon, will be the Carlton coach. Now, I'm going to go through some trade chatter. Now, some of that, is pretty plain. So I mentioned before with the Sydney Swans, I'll get through now. Uh, George Hewitt has been linked to Carlton. I think he may leave as a free agent and Carlton are a club of interest. Carlton, or well, Sydney, this is the four that are potentially going to have to be squeezed out, or five maybe. But Luke Parker, Jordan Dawson, Dylan Stevens, Hayden McLean, and George Hewitt, so five. Probably two of them at least will have to go. Probably one of Parker or Dawson. I don't see Dawson leaving. He's from SA. I think Jordan Dawson will get a four-year deal. Luke Parker wants a long-term deal. I think the Swans would offer him a long-term deal, but they can't afford to if they're tight salary cap. So he may have to uh, agree to a three-year deal, maybe for trigger of a fourth. I don't think maybe he'll want that. Or, sorry, they may only be able to offer him two or three for trigger for a third, where he may want at least three for trigger for a fourth. He's in great form. He's in career best form. He's, been ultra consistent. He was in my role or in my all Australian team for 2021. Luke Parker, I think he was in the throughout the whole year. Um, so regardless, he still had a great year. He was in the team at the end. He's a gun. The Swans, if they can lo- have to lose one of Parker or Dawson, they'd probably lose Parker because they've got a lot of midfield. They've got a young players. But Jordan Dawson is a lot younger. Uh, both are great. I'd keep both. Um, I'd be really tough to torn to pick between one. I'd actually find to take someone else out then let one of them go. Um, but yeah, the tight salary cap, 
They brought in Hickey. They had to lose a Lear just to bring in Hickey. So the salary cap is tight. Um, yeah, I think George should be could be the one that's gone. And Hayden McLean will probably be gone. And uh, Dylan Seamus may stay. Uh, but it's probably down to Parker and or Dawson. Well, Parker and or Dylan Stevens and Dawson going. So I think Parker could be on the way out. And the Saints is exclusively revealed are heavily into Luke Parker and Hayden McLean. So the Saints, the Swans, I said earlier, could be doing some good trade talk. Now, a few other names that people keep asking me about are clubs. What are Hawthorne wanting to do? I think Hawthorne have said they want to go to the draft. Um, so I don't really expect them to bring any bigger names. Adam Chera, um, set to, his preference is Carl. Now that Ross is going to be the coach, they're just going to talk through. Ross said that Andy Brayshaw and Chera came to his house the day he got let go from the Dockers. And they brought flowers, flowers to his house now. Take it out what you will. Um, this shows that maybe the media reports saying that they haven't got a good relationship is false. But I think Chera's preference is still Carlton. But don't be surprised if it doesn't end up at Carlton if Ross is the call, when Ross is announced as a coach. Carlton will want to announce the coach soon if they want to bring in Chero or anyone else uh, before the trade period. Um, get Ross settled into that role. It's the list management role of Carlton. There's a mess of set of Carlton at the moment, the treatment of tea. Uh, but yeah, Chero, uh, yeah, set to join Carlton. Um, there's a few other players you go through, but they're the ones of note at the moment. Um, Oh, Luke Dunson, sorry. That's the one I mentioned earlier that I said I'd get to. Saints and him have mutually parted ways. Gold Coast and Carlton are linked in a Luke Dunson. But it looks like Gold Coast is the favourite moment. And don't rule out the Adelaide Crows. Now, my final thoughts, guys, are this. Now, guys, I'm going to go through my predictions for the rest of the final series. Now, obviously, I tipped, as I said earlier, a GWS would beat Geelong, which would eliminate Geelong. Game, yeah, I think, as I said earlier, Brisbane to beat Bulldogs, GWS to beat Geelong, which would then mean I have predicted Melbourne to would versus GWS. I would go Melbourne, it would be in Perth, and which would eliminate the Giants, and Portland and Brisbane at the Adelaide Oval. Really tough. These were my two grand final predictions, but now they can't meet in the granny. And so at the Adelaide Ovals, we go with the power, and then that will leave the grand final at Optus Stadium, Melbourne and Port Adelaide, and I'll go the power. Zach Butters, Mitch Georgiati, Zach but- uh, Connor. Rosie, Xavier Dersma, Charlie Dixon, Ollie Wines and Co. to be Premiership players this season, 2021. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And merch, merch is in the works. Oh, sorry, merch is in the works. Yeah, additional merch is always in the works, but the merch is plenty on there. There's stubby holders, there's mugs, there's hats, there's T-shirts, there's hoodies, there's bumper stickers that you could put on a car, put on your fridge, whatever. Bumper stickers currently available for $9.95. Head to the website. The link is always attached in every YouTube video. You know what to do. Go to the website and get your merch. Stay in your house. So you want me on Cameo? Head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Now, my final thoughts are this. The teaser. You may, may, not guaranteeing this, you may see a goal reenactment on the show next week. May. But something I can confirm, I am heavily in discussions with a few people to be guests on the show. Now, you can take your guesses of what they are and who they are, sorry, um, but I'm getting some plans in the works. Let's just say um, if these two guests come to fruition, you guys will be extremely excited to hear from them. And let's just say that the forbidden door may be open to having an AFL player on the show. I may have given some of it away. But, yes, could happen. Could happen. That door is not closed. The forbidden door is open. Now, actually, also some final thoughts, too. Actually, Tease, I was going to mention this on last week's show, and I did it. Um, the, uh, the return, the wrestling returns of CM Punk, Becky Lynch, and Brock Lesnar. How great was that for you, wrestling fans? I know a lot of you in the live Q&A like asking me about that. So, um, yeah, that was great to see them back. But... Until next week, everyone, hopefully those potential guests could be on in future weeks or months. Um, if anything gets more confirmed, I can happily reveal it to you. But if not, I'll, it'll be down the line, hopefully. But anyway, guys, appreciate you all for watching. Until next week, everyone, have a great one. And most importantly, go Saints! Well, sorry, go the Saints! Yeah, take that. <laughs>